Hey guys, I'm Matthew Pfeiffer. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Toxic to Triumph. In this week's episode, I'm going to be talking about the idealization phase and how that plays such a large role into the toxic dynamic. So stay tuned. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. For the next few weeks, I want to talk about the cycle of abuse. Regardless if you are in a romantic relationship or in a family dynamic with someone who is narcissistic or toxic, it's important to, re- to realize these behaviors and for you to recognize these behaviors moving forward. You can actually see these patterns in coworkers. You can see these patterns uh, in friends. And so once you start to recognize the patterns and the shifts and the flip-flop and the idealization phase and start to see some of these signs, uh, the devaluation phase, and once you start to see the pattern, you'll know to get out. You'll be able to recognize it pretty much as soon as you, as soon as you see it, you'll be able to get out uh, once you know um, some of these signs and some of these behaviors. It's also important to know these signs and symptoms as a portion of your recovery as well. A lot of times people will ask themselves, how did I get into this situation? And they will wonder, um, you know, was it me? Was it them? What, like, how did I get hooked? How did I get so deep into this situation? So to start this conversation out, I want to talk about the idealization phase. Some of you may call this the honeymoon phase. Some of you also may know this as the love bombing phase. So I think that it's important for you to know that number one, you are, you're, if you're listening to this, more than likely you or someone that you know are a victim of abuse, in particular emotional abuse. And with you understanding that you're a victim, it's important to know that you were selected. This was not by chance. You were selected to be their next victim. They chose you. Make no mistake about it. They chose you. So the first thing is that they saw something that they either wanted from you or needed from you. And that's called narcissistic supply. And that narcissistic supply is that drug that they need. That There's a reason why these people treat people the way that they do. And the reason why they don't let go. They, a lot of times, in a lot of situations, they don't ever let go. They don't view, they don't view you as a person they view you as a possession I think that's something that is very important for you to realize and understand um, moving forward so I want to put you into their mind for a second right so you're probably listening to this from more than likely you're listening to this from your phone your phone is a possession to you and at some point in time you were absolutely in love with your phone in particular, when you when you very first got it, um, you treated it well. More than likely, you bought a case for it. Last thing you ever wanted to do was drop it. You didn't. You probably didn't even want you know your kids playing with it. You probably didn't want. You would never just leave your phone, you know, s- somewhere random where someone could steal it. Probably, if you're listening from an iPhone, you put you know you backed it up. You put iCloud on it. 
You made sure that you did everything. You put it, you know, a security lock on it and make sure that no one could touch it. No one could, could enter your phone because it's yours. It belongs to you. The reason why you chose this phone was because it was able to do something for you that other phones were not able to do. I don't care if you're an Android person. I don't care if you're an iPhone person. I don't care if you like Nokia. There was a preference that you had with this phone. So when you very first got your phone, you spent a lot of time with that phone, putting your passwords in it, updating your apps, getting your contacts in it, basically personalizing it and grooming it to exactly what you need your phone to do and exactly how you need your phone to function. This is exactly what the narcissist or toxic person in your life did during the idealization phase and the honeymoon phase in your life. You provide for them what's called narcissistic supply. Same way that you need your phone, they needed you for something. For some people, that just might mean that you are arm candy to them. For some people, you were being used for finances. For some people, there was an image that they needed to portray, that they needed a husband, that they needed a wife, but they don't care how they treat that husband or wife. They just wanted to make sure that the image for them was perfect. It's always, there's always some level of surfaceness to a lot of the things that they do. To a certain level and to a certain extent, people who are narcissistic and toxic are codependent. They needed you. They needed you for something. They could be using you to help rear and raise their kids. It could be just about anything, right? Whatever that need in their mind is. Same way that all of us use our phones very differently. Some of us use our phones to shoot videos. Some of us use our phones the way that they were always intended to be used. For phone calls. Some people use their phones strictly for social media. For every one of us, that's a little bit different. However, the way with narcissistic and toxic people, when they select their victims, they're choosing their supply based off of what, what it is that they're looking at. Uh, they're choosing their, I'm sorry, they're choosing their victims based off the supply that they're, that they're looking for. So with that being said, the same way that you are uploading your passwords and personalizing your phone, that's exactly what they're doing to you during this phase during the idealization phase right they what they do is that they actually look to see exactly what it is that you're looking for right because they know that they know that they're not going to get the supply that they want without giving you what you want first right so if you remember during this phase right you you may have had a lot of bad things happen but everyone remembers the idealization phase the reason why i know that is because that's when they got their hooks in you that's when they made, they made themselves literally in your brain, it functioned like a drug. They made themselves feel like in, in a romantic relationship, that they, they, they were the greatest person in the world. That if you remember during that time, you probably felt like this person was your soulmate. Like you, you could never find anyone like this. Like this, this person was the perfect person for you. In your mind, there was no chance no chance that there was anyone else out there like them. There was a reason for that. It's because you were groomed. Because they didn't, they, they were so surface level, they, they chose you. And they saw something in you and they knew, they literally knew what buttons to push. They knew what games to play. They knew how to present themselves to make you feel like they were the most idealized, the most idealistic person for you. If you're a single mother, you may have been looking for the best father figure for your children. Well, they were probably the greatest father that you probably saw in your life. If you were, if you were someone who, uh, if you're, if you're a man and you wanted someone at home, and if you wanted someone to take care of the take care of the house, so to speak, you probably never never met anyone greater. In the beginning, they were probably everything and more that you wanted in bed. During this phase, you went on the most grandest trips. You went on the, the best dates. You had the best sex. You, you know, your family loved them more than likely. Sometimes every once in a while, family members can pick up on things. 
in your mind, this was fail proof, right? That, that you had never met anyone better. You never felt like this before is what t- people typically say, what people typically, what you typically hear from people. Never felt, I've never had this experience before in my life. They presented to you a foolproof front to get you hooked. This was part of the love bombing phase. This was part of the idealization phase, right? To get you hooked, to make you feel like, to put you on a pedestal. But that pedestal was only, was only going to last for so long. That pedestal was not your pedestal. That pedestal eventually was going to flip to where you were going to be putting them on a pedestal because in your mind, there was no one greater than this person. There was no man greater than this. There was no woman better than this in, in terms of people you've dated in the past. Uh, if it's a, this is a family member, you know, no one can be better than, than my mother. No one can be better than my father. Look at all the great things that they've done for me. A lot of times this extends not only to you, but you'll see that they do a lot of great things in the community. You'd be, you, we'll talk about this in depth later, but there's a lot of narcissistic people who are great in church, who are very giving to the community, who are giving to school systems and to children, right? Very scary, which makes it even more difficult because when the devaluation phase comes, and we'll talk about the devaluation phase another time, but when, they, when the abuse starts to come, the abuse typically is very is targeted towards you and maybe a couple of members of your household, but but the rest of the community does not see it. To the rest of the members of society, this is still that great idealization, per, idealized person that you met, because that because their relationships on the outside of the home and on the outside of you know people who are very close to them, I tell people that their relationships are uh, a mile wide but an inch deep. They're able to put on this front at work. They're able to put on this front in the community. They're able to put on this front towards a good portion of their friends. They're able to put on this front at church. They're able to put on this front wherever it is that they do community service. I also think it's important for you to know that during this phase, literally, the same portions of the brain that cause addiction, heroin addiction nonetheless, is the same part of the brain that activates when you get when you fall in love with someone who is narcissistic or toxic. This is the reason why it is so difficult to leave. And if you have left, you know that you went through a withdrawal period. Not only did you go through a withdrawal period, the average person will leave and return on average seven times. What do you think that is? It's relapse. It's a version of, of relapse. If you if you wanted to compare addiction to um, to being in love with someone who is toxic or narcissistic. So if you think about it, if you were made to feel like this person was the best lover ever, the best if they were you're like your soulmate or in a workplace situation, the best boss ever. This is going to be the best workplace situation ever. Then. Eventually, when the devaluation and the abuse starts to happen, the problem isn't them. The problem is you and their eyes, right? And we'll talk about that in another, probably next week. However, it's very important for you to know that this was intentional, that they put you on a pedestal, right? Not for you, not with the intent of you staying on that pedestal, but with the intent of you flip-flopping and then you start to idealize them and put them on a pedestal. That pedestal was just being borrowed for a little bit. That pedestal, in their mind, actually belonged to them. And this idealization phase that we're talking about, this grooming phase, while they were putting you up there, while they were putting you on that pedestal, the intent was for, for you to feel like they were the greatest person in the world. We'll talk about this more next week, but this is also the reason why it was so difficult to leave and why it is so difficult to leave for those of you who are still in this dynamic, because you're still thinking about the good times. 
right? You, when you're ready to leave, you're, you, you hear people say this all, all the time. I know their potential. I know what they can be. I remember how it used to be. That was just a front. It was not, it was not intended for it to be long-term and it was, just, it was just a front to get you hooked. So I hope this brings some clarity to some of the things that you have been through and reason why you actually got hooked and how you actually got hooked. Next week, we're gonna be talking about the devaluation phase, but we're gonna bounce back and forth between the devaluation and the idealization phase because that's actually what happens in the actual relationship, which, which makes it even more difficult to leave. If you think about it, if someone is, is always horrible, you would, you would leave immediately. So they bounce back and forth between the idealization phase and devaluation phase. So we'll talk about that next week. Until then, I'm Matthew Pfeiffer. You can find me on Instagram at Matt Pfeiffer Coaching, on Facebook, Matt Pfeiffer Coaching. And until then, I will see you next week. Keep your head to the sky, spread your wings wide, show the world you can fly, baby. Show the world you can fly, fly. Show the world you can fly, baby. Dream big, keep your head to the sky, spread your wings wide, show the world you can fly, baby. Show the world you can fly, yeah. Show the world you can fly. Dream big, keep your head to the sky, spread your wings wide, show the world you can fly, baby. Show the world you can fly.